my friends, it's Andy coming to you live from Southern California on a fantastic day. <laughs> yes, truly fantastic day. I just realized my seat, my son screwed it all the way down so that I look like a midget. I know midget is probably not a politically correct word. I'm so sorry. Uh, there, that's much better. I don't want you to miss that on my shirt. Um, yes. Now, this is a good day. This, um, You know, we have a lot going on, obviously, in our country. We've had a lot going on in our country for the last several months. Unbelievable amount of stuff. And you have the option of looking at our world uh, that is in chaos as a horrible thing or a good thing, right? Uh, uh, the pastor today at my church, you know, he actually talked about the very same thing. And I've talked about the same thing over the last several months. That you can look at, um, you know, chaos and uh, horrible things going on in your life, whether it's divorce and cancer and, and death and destruction, as and, and focus on it as just all of it is bad, or look uh, at all of it as opportunity, opportunity to become closer to God, opportunity to figure out how it is you get through it and and survive and and, and become a better person because of it all. Uh, how to teach your children or grandchildren, you know, um, what it's like to be brave and fearless and work through stuff. And and in, in some cases, how you die um, uh, in some ways, this sounds horrible, but 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 die in a way that is to be honored. That is to be not, oh, woe well, is me, uh, in, in, in be brave in, in, in death. Some, and, and much of that comes uh, through faith, right? If you have faith in God, that you know that, uh, you know, and I've not always been faithful. I, 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 my children know that. <laughs> I surely know that. That um, it has been a long road for me to get to a place of where I'm at today. And I still have a long ways to go. I still feel like an infant in my faith. And I have a long ways to go, even though I've been a Christian now for something like 15 years. That I'm still learning. I'm still getting better. I'm still um, falling down. You know, you walk up 10 steps and you fall down five steps. You walk up 10 more steps and you fall down 15 steps, <laughs> and then you, right? You keep on going back and forth. And I, and I think that there is a, uh, a lesson to be learned in all of that. But this is the opportunity. Um, uh, and we talk, uh, at least we, the, the pastor of my church, talks about how there seems to be this new, uh, you know, re, rebirth in uh, in faith and Christianity and, and other faiths, I'm sure, uh, along the way. Uh, and so I'm going to talk a little bit more of that, but I'm also going to talk about how the Democrats have gone nuts. Uh, and they, uh, and again, we know they've gone nuts. Democrats are crazy. Uh, <laughs> we, we know that. And some of you may be on here and you may be feeling, well, I'm going crazy because I hate him so much. And I wish he would have just gotten sicker and he's not getting sicker. Why isn't he not getting sicker? This is so crazy. It's supposed to be deadly. People are supposed to be dying. Why isn't the president dying? And they're going crazy. Right. And maybe this is the show for you. Maybe this is the show where you realize, well, wait a minute. I have been told that the coronavirus is horrible and people are dying. Why isn't he dying? And why isn't all, why aren't all the other Republicans that are getting sick dying? Why aren't they dying? This is so crazy. I'm going to talk to you more about that right after my sponsors, which is way more important than what I just talked about. All right, so we need to talk about today's happycoffee.com. Today's happycoffee.com has what's called uh, happy hormones or uh, hormone uh, increasers or dose, D-O-S-E, dopamine, oxytocin, uh, serotonin, and uh, endorphins. Uh, this coffee helps boost those things and, and puts you in a really good mood. Even when things are going horribly wrong, it allows you <laughs> to read the Bible uh, with uh, joy and to get through your day, even though like buildings are falling down, buildings are on fire, people are looting your business. You have happy coffee and it really doesn't matter. Um, it also helps you lose weight. Um, and uh, at least that's the, my uh, experience with uh, happy coffee. I've lost about 20 pounds over the last several months and, uh, and my weight has decreased so much. And the happiness in my life has increased so much that um, uh, the I, I I was told, and I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the coffee. I, I can't tell you that, or else uh, the uh, the FDA uh, would um, destroy me uh, and kill me because I'm not supposed to make any claims. But it just so happens that since I've been taking that, I've been told to get off of all of my. Um, uh, blood pressure medication. My blood pressure dropped down so low that I I, I was exhausted and tired, <laughs> which is strange, right? That doesn't sound great, but I've had high blood pressure all my life. So I don't know. It happens uh, at the same time that uh, they told me to get off all my medication. 
I, I don't know. It, it could be related. I'm not sure. Uh, and then today's CBD oil, uh, that also could be part of it because I take the best CBD product on the, pro- on the planet. It's uh, uh, patented. It's um, uh, got uh, um, uh, 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 great ingredients. It has um, liposome technology. Wow. I've been talking about this forever. I've even written books about it. <laughs> <laughs> liposome technology, which allows the nutrients to get into your body and become more effective. And then I have today's Viseo.com, which uh, is all the other great products, which include a new V shake, a new protein shake uh, and um, skincare products, which makes me look so young. You would know that I'm about 97 years old because of the skincare products. They're scientifically proven to make you look younger. And so my 90 year old skin looks uh, almost like I'm 30. All right, so that's it. Those are my great products. All right, let's get into what's going on today. So um, I got a few uh, things I'm gonna share with you later on that are kind of unrelated, but I, I, I've had this, I've had a couple of days. I needed a couple of days since uh, uh, our great president got diagnosed with COVID-19 and, some of the other people in the administration and then some other Republicans have been diagnosed with COVID-19. I understand that there's an investigation trying to figure out, is it possible that there was some, uh, you know, a, a chemical attack within the White House? And that may be one of the things. Of course, Democrats are saying, no, it's because he doesn't wear masks and he goes to all these events. And, <laughs> and we all know that masks don't work anyway, but that's OK. Um, the Democrats believe they work and that's OK. And that's fine. You you wear your mask and you make us all wear it. At the store. I'm more than happy to wear it at the store. Well, I'm not more than happy. I do wear it at the store only because I don't want to get into a fist fight with people. Um, but uh, it is. It is too, I don't have a mask handy or else it is dumb to believe that even like putting this thing on my face is going to keep any of the uh, virus to get out there where you can get it. But whatever you want to think. But you also got to understand that you have a president who has tested every day. Everybody around him is tested it all the time, if not every day, that he's in a little bit of a bubble. That even with that, even with all the people that wear the masks um, and probably wear masks far more often than the press does, because we know they don't wear the masks as soon as the cameras go off. We've seen it. We know that many of the uh, the Democrats don't wear masks because we've seen Nancy Pelosi without a mask. We've seen uh, all the idiots who claim, well, you got to wear your mask, and then they don't wear masks, right? The Cuomos and all the other morons, you know, that's how, you got to wear your mask. And then there's all kinds of video of them not wearing their mask. It is really one of the dumbest things we've ever heard on uh, in these last uh, several months. Uh, and I and I know that I have a mask under somewhere, and I because I had a show, and I can't find one. But we know that that that's really their big thing. That's all we hear about. Even Chris Wallace, who's like now on this, wear the damn mask, damn it. That would have saved us all from having this thing. It's not the mask. It's a virus that's in the air. And even the president some months ago, I, I remember him saying it. I can I could not find the clip where he said, it. and I've even said it. We're all going to get it. We're all going to get some form of this corona. We've all had the coronavirus and other forms and other fit that we're going to get it. But right now we have far more ways of being treated for it. It is not as deadly as it maybe was at one point because now we understand a lot more about it. We have more uh, treatments for it. Um, we have uh, potentially some vaccines, which, again, most people aren't going to take the vaccines anyway, not because they don't trust Trump. It's just because people don't like taking vaccines. It is just one of those things we have in our environment. It's another virus that we have to deal with. But being, and I think I have it here, if hopefully I still have it and I didn't take it down. Oh, I did. I must have taken it down. Darn, gosh darn it. 99, what is it? 99.9997% um, um, children are, um, will not die. Nobody, people are dying from it like they used to. And I know this was going to get pulled down as soon as I said this. It's not going to be allowed to be shown. Um, it's going to be, um, you know, YouTube's going to pull it down. Twitter's going to pull it down as soon as I said that. But we, the science is, they talk about the science. The science is telling us that people aren't dying from it like they were in New York because you had an idiot who was taking people that were sick with COVID-19 and putting them in a nursing home with people that are predisposed to die of anything, especially COVID-19. You don't put somebody with a, with flu with a very bad flu, you don't put somebody with a very, very bad flu in a nursing home next to a bunch of people that are 90 years old with a bunch of pre-existing um, uh, issues like diabetes and, and, and uh, you know, all the other stuff, heart problems and uh, cardiovascular problems and respiratory problems. You don't take somebody with the flu, COVID-19, uh, whatever, contagious disease, and put them back in the nursing home. 
You're an idiot. You are what would be called a Cuomo. So next in the dictionary, when you see the word idiot, it, it means Cuomo. Anybody called Cuomo is a moron. That is what you would call them. All right. And so that, that is what you would say. And what is happening right now is the Democrats are going crazy because they thought Donald Trump would die as soon as he got COVID-19. He even said, I'm going to get it. I, I will probably get it. A lot of people will probably get it. And then we're going to get through it. Because why? Because we have all kinds of prophylactics and ways of treating it that are going to allow us to get through it and, and not have that big of an issue. But he's fat. But he's obese. Why isn't he having more oxygen? Why isn't all this stuff happening? He should be dying. Oh, my God. He should be dying. Why isn't he dying? Um, and they're going crazy because they want him to die, which is the reason I put a post up earlier. Uh, you have motivated me more than ever to make sure I'm, I, I'm a part. Again, I got a small show. I got, uh, I don't know, 300 people watching right now that, um, um, you know, I, or probably already are conservatives. But there's a couple people watching that I know that are kind of going, I'm not sure about this guy. But he's, he's, he's kind of crazy. But uh, I might listen to him. Hey, Amy, nice to see you. Hey, David, nice to see you. Yep. <laughs> I wait the opportunity for God to show up big and develop faith. Oh, I got some good stuff coming from my pastor. This is going to be good. You're going to like this stuff. But praise uh, for to God. He is faithful. Yes, I got some good stuff coming up for, for a bunch of you. Revi revival is coming. It is huge. The church is packed. You cannot find a parking space at my church in California where it's illegal for us to gather and sing. <laughs> where they're talking about where they're going to chain the doors, where they're going to arrest our pastor. 3,000 people throw, show up to each service, three services a day. 3,000 people show up and go into the overflow, which means there's more than 3,000 people. It is really crazy. They got people watching in every country that I know of, and there's probably countries that I don't know of that they're watching. It is really crazy. Uh, where you got somebody watching from Twitch, you have big arms. Well, thank you. <laughs> Whoever you, Paramora Joshin. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to leave this up for a while. Hey, Kelly, somebody said I have big arms. <laughs> All right, back to the show. Hey, Warrior, nice to see you. Uh, and April, love to see you, your beautiful face. Um, I saw that you um, uh, were out in Florida, I think, right? Traveling, having some good times. Uh, fantastic. Do you think um, you could beat Trump uh, in an arm wrestling? I don't know, because he's pretty big and tall. And plus, he's overweight and has a lot of weight behind him. He's obese, apparently, uh, uh, which is, you know, have you ever seen an obese person work as hard and as often as Donald Trump? And he never sleeps and works and does not want to sit down and traveling all over the country and speaking everywhere. I'm not sure that I've seen an obese, right? He may be technically under whatever uh, guidelines, whatever they have. But I think you also have to put in there. Um, obese also equals somebody who doesn't like get out of their bed and you have to cut a hole in the wall in order to get them out. Um, I love the upper part of your shirt. That's the only part there is. Only You don't like the lower part? <laughs> is that what you're saying? You like the lower part of my shirt? Oh, yeah. Well, there might be something there. All right. Uh, what else I got here? Got somebody watching on Twitter. Thanks. Watch on the Periscope. Watch, oh, thank you, Glenn. Glenn01. Um, we, I love our president. Fantastic. All right. So let me show you. And, and here is the thing. It's the lack of sleep, man. It's killer for the BMI. Yep, you're right. You're right. All right. So, so you have this. Um, hold on one second. Yes, son. Um, when is it time to eat? When is it time to eat? It is going to be time to eat when I'm done with my show. Can I continue? No. no. <laughs> I won't get to continue anyway. That was an appearance by my son, Bo. Thank you very much. All right. So. So you have uh, a portion of our country who's going crazy. And of course, they've been wishing Donald Trump, uh, you know, to die and death. And um, fine, fine. You know, I, I've just, you know, whatever. Uh, I've, I've been so angry and pissed about that that issue that, you know, but we know that, right? That we've been people, we had, we had somebody the other day on Saturday, we uh, had uh, Black Lives Matter Antifa in our city here, and they drove over four people and tried to kill four of us. So we know the Democrats are nuts and crazy. They'll hop in a car and drive over anybody wearing an American flag. That is how they feel about America. Democrats hate America. They hate anybody that carries the American flag. They hate anybody that's conservative. They hate anybody that loves God. They hate anybody that um, is for our Constitution, that they will get into a car and drive over us and try to kill us. And then when our president gets COVID-19, because he's brave enough to go out and understand that, you know what, I'm going to get it at some point. The masks, 
may or may not help. I'll have people wearing masks. I'll have people surrounding me get tested all the time. But he, but he was truthful in saying, I'm probably still going to get it. A number of people are going to get it. When we open up our country, people are going to get it. We know that. It, it, it's a virus. It's in the air. You nitwits. We're going to get it. We, we have to. We can't close down. It's not killing people. 99.9, whatever, whatever age group, it's always in the 99 point something, survive. Right, and now we have uh, ways of treating it so that when you do get it, I, I don't know of any way to treat a cold. People die from probably a really bad cold. People die from um, pneumonia. People are dying from just the regular flu. And all what we have, we have Dimatap and some other crap like that, but yet nobody's going crazy over the flu. But somehow we're going crazy over this COVID-19, which shows now. Now, is it, do people have some other effects from it over time? Yes. But again, 99 point whatever, add the nines and the zeros and the sevens, are, people are getting over it now. It's time to open up our cities. It's time to go back to school. And, 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 and now that you have our president, who is obese, apparently, um, gets it. Now people are pissed because he's not dying from it. And now they're going, wait a minute. Now he's delivering pizza. <laughs> He's like an Uber Eats. He's like an Uber Eats and he's delivering pizza and he's putting people in danger. Well, he didn't actually deliver the pizza. Other people did. But he's out there. And let me show you a video really quick. I'm going to show you this video. I'm going to bring it up uh, to the stream here. And here we have him driving by his the people that love him and they're waving at him and cheering. Right? And when you see, you see people wearing masks, and I'm going to stop it right there. You see the people inside wearing masks. You see the guy on the camera down there on below wearing a mask. You guy, actually the guy inside, probably Secret Service or maybe even a doctor wearing some type of suit, right? Protecting himself from the president. They're, they're doing everything to protect everything that they say that you must be wearing to protect yourself. They are doing. Right? Right. Okay. They're, they're crazy <laughs> because he's not wearing that. And but now they're going crazy because now he's delivering pizza. He's saying hi to his fans and they're going, but look at now he's putting people in danger, but they're wearing, I thought you said if he's wearing a mask then everything's okay. I thought Chris Wallace said, wear the damn mask. They're all wearing the damn mask and you're still going crazy. You're crazy because it didn't kill. You're crazy. You're mad because it's not as deadly as you want it to be. Now I wonder. I wonder sometimes, are they just not, are they, are they only, is CNN, I don't know, I don't watch CNN, the MSN, DNC, MSDNC, I don't watch, um, I don't read the New York Times, so I'm just wondering, maybe, maybe, just maybe, they've not heard that people aren't dying from COVID-19 like they were in the early stages of COVID-19 when we didn't understand it and didn't have any ways of treating it and we didn't have you know, uh, all these other things that we knew to do and all whatever, you know, whatever you think helps, right? Maybe they're not being told that it's 99.9 blah, whatever, um, survivable, that other things can kill us in, at a higher percentage. Maybe they're not, maybe they're just not being told. <laughs> and, and maybe that's it. Because as soon as they saw that the, the Donald, uh, our great president had it, they were always oh, going to die. I never thought he was going to die. As a matter of fact, I said, wow, how great is it that he's now gets to be quarantined with the first lady? That's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> That's why I need to go to church. <laughs> because I was thinking, wow, he gets to be quarantined with the first lady now. Like he doesn't, like he doesn't have a, you know, he's, what, what, but then they, they sent him to, um, um, what's that place called? Uh, uh, Walter Reed. So they, they send the Walter Reed. He's going, well, wait a minute. Can the first lady come? No, she can't come with you. What do you mean? What do you mean? I got to be stuck in this hospital and I don't get the first lady with me? What? What are you, nuts? That's so crazy. Uh, and so um, I, I'm thinking that they're, uh, I think they're mad because they've been told something on CNN and MSDNC that just doesn't, um, it's not, it's not computing. Like they've been lied to so much about this pan this this what is they're calling a pandemic they're being lied to so much about masks they're being lied so much about all this other stuff that they really truly believe that when the, when the president got it that he he was a goner that we're gonna be you know making plans for his funeral and all this kind of stuff and maybe they're going wait a minute he's he's 
he's stronger. He might be, he might be Iron Man. He might, <laughs> there might, why isn't he dying? He's supposed to be dying. According to everything we've been told, or that's he's supposed to be dead. And I think now they're going nuts. Like maybe he is, maybe he's Superman, or maybe he's got something else. And it's, it's really thrown them off. Like they don't know what to do. Even Chris Wallace. Right. Chris Wallace brings on a Klobuchar and a doctor that agrees with him. even Chris Wallace. Now, I, I have no I, I have I have not liked Chris Wallace for a very long time. I don't even know why Fox keeps him on the show, but he's clearly not. He's, he's really he's clearly nuts. He's clearly not as smart as his dad. And he clearly has a bias against the president. Right. Because we know that based on how he ran the uh, debates and all that kind of stuff. But today, he, because he's so mad. Right. He's so mad that the president's not dying. He's so mad that he's not sicker that he brings on people to say, well, he should have been wearing a mask. And you got Klobuchar. Well, you know, he's obviously going to lose the election now because uh, he's got COVID-19, which is just the opposite of what I believe is going to happen. I believe that everything is going to come out that, wow, he's Donald Trump is right. That we're all going to get it. We're all going to get over it. It's not that big of a deal. It's going to go away. Not that big of a deal. Uh, and let's just move on. And so there we go. All right. Let me look at a couple more of the things. I got some stuff from my pastor day. My pastor did a great job today. If you are not uh, aware of Calvary um, uh, Chapel, Chino Hills, church with Jack Hibbs, uh, become aware of it, whether you're a Christian or not. Um, the messages through October are all leading into the um, election. Every uh, message will be one that will help us understand why it is we need to vote, in, you know, in a, in a conservative fashion. Um, and so pay attention to what's happening. I'm going to pay, play some excerpts. I got, I got five. I'm not sure if I'm going to hit them all. But they're all important. They're all important points that I've been speaking to you. So I, I think Jack watches, obviously, my show because he steals from my show. And then he puts his uh, message together. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, we just like-minded people, right? Uh, uh, Dan Bongioni, same thing. Uh, you know, pray for him, too, because he's got, um, I, I think he's got cancer uh, in his neck. So please be praying for him and what's going on with him. Um, but um um, there's some great messaging coming from this church. So, uh, pray for, I definitely pray for the president. You know, we want, he, he still could get sick. He's still in his seventies, right? He's still older and anything, whether it's COVID-19 or the flu or, um, um, uh, you know, bronchitis, if it's anything, anybody that age has a propensity to be sicker, but he's got, well, how many, do how many doctors does he come marching out? What is it? Seven or eight? Come marching out, right? They've got to be taking care of them. They're they're giving him everything. They're giving experimental drugs, and they're watching him. They're giving him oxygen. They're doing everything, and he's he's doing Uber Eats. The president's doing Uber Eats uh, while he's running our entire country, which is amazing. What an amazing president! Um, uh, hey, Deborah, nice to see you. Um, Bo, baby, come to Florida, sweetie. I'll feed you. <laughs> he, are you kidding me? The kid never. He had sherbet. Following the sherbet, he had chips and corn salsa from Trader Joe's. And then um, I'm sure he had something else. I got to look around. So the kids, again, the kids not starving, just so you know. All right. Um, brave enough. <clears throat> Trump drove in front of well-wishers, lined up in front of it, It's fantastic. This, it, it, he's, 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 yeah, listen. The president is a, 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 an amazing man. Uh, the death wishers are the same people who moan and complain that they want the president with empathy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got an ask about, I pray for the president, but I pray that he dies is what I'm praying for. I'm, I'm not praying that he lives. Um, yes. <laughs> I love that you guys are meeting each other, meeting, uh, you know, meeting the different people in my um, sphere. Uh, got a, 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 Basically, they are socialists now, not really Democrats anymore. Propaganda socialism. And thank you from Twitter, Glenn from Twitter. Thank you, Glenn. Earlier, he delivered chocolate. Did he really? Oh, I think I heard that he delivered some chocolate out there. It seems to me that I have a lot of spiritual people on your show now. So let me just say, I hope BLM people experience the wrath of God, Old Testament style. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, they they will. I mean, they, they ran over a bunch of us over there. Four of our people. Um, ain't dead. He ain't dead. Yeah, no, he, and he ain't, he ain't died because he can't kill. He's Iron Trump. He is amazing. I wear the shirt to church called Iron Trump, and more people stop me and say, where can I get that shirt? I love that shirt. He definitely is Iron Trump. He is amazing. Will you pay some of that? I have some Kelly friends I'd like to show. I'm not sure what that is. Dixie. 
Hey, Dixie, I saw you. I think you, it's your birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Dixie. I'm pretty sure you were the one that was partying yesterday, wherever you were partying. I wish I would have been there. Was it in Orange County? Because I would have gone wherever you were. Oh, calling it China virus now. Yeah, definitely it is China. I heard, uh, oops, sorry about that. I heard it wasn't chocolate, but decks of Trump cards. <laughs> It is possible. All right. Let me get to a couple of these messages uh, from my great pastor, uh, Jack Hibbs. Uh, the first one, um, it's, it's when you say the name Trump or Jesus, and this isn't comparing Trump to Jesus. I just want you to understand that. But you say the name Trump and you, you know, people like have this weird thing. Either they're like, oh, yes, Trump. Like when I wear my hat or my shirt, people go, yes. And they want to slap me high five or give me knuckles or say, hey, I like that. Good job. Um, or you got people go, I, like I was at the school district the other day. I took uh, one of my son's computers to the school district and I had uh, a Trump shirt on or Trump mask. I think it was a Trump mask. I, I have I have it all. Hat, mask, shirt. And I walk in, they go, what does your mask say? They go, oh, I don't like him. He's a horrible person. Right? That's what the lady said that I dropped the computer up. I'm surprised she didn't spit on me the way that she had that look on her face and it got all crinkled like that, right? like a, like a school person would. And then I go to another place to go, oh, we love him. And then, you know, this thing. So you always have this. It's either vile hatred or, wow, this is fantastic. He's, he's love. And the same thing with Jesus. So here, uh, Pastor Jack talks about um, that uh, little bit of comparison that you get um, when uh, you bring up either one of those names. Hold on one second. I should have done this while I was talking. Here we go. Right, I'm going to share it. You're going to see it. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to take me away. I'm going to mute my mic, and we're going to. Because Jesus' name is a dividing rod. I get that. I would never expected uh, the name Trump to freak people out. <laughs> and it's weird, because I never liked the guy. I never liked him until I began watching his policies <laughs> and what he's done with Israel. Uh, what Trump has done, according, listen, for pro-life. And, and uh, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. So a lot of people that are kind of, quite frankly, uninformed, they can't get past Trump's past, uh, which is probably okay, because we probably can't get past your past either. But um, be that as it may, I don't, I, I, when I vote, I don't vote for a pastor. I vote for a president. And uh, President Trump has rocked the world by doing amazing things. And what has happened uh, is that a, a production group has put together a documentary called After Trump. And I'm telling you, I watched it last night. This thing is powerful. If you say, oh, I don't like them, watch this. No, I'm serious. You ought to watch this. You ought to get your hands on this. It's a... It's 10 bucks. None of us here get any money for this. This goes directly to uh, the producers of this. It's available in the bookstore or online at jackgibbs.com. After Trump, um, Mike Huckabee, Franklin Graham, Alveda King, Dennis Prager, Robert Jeffress. So many. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. So that's that one of those names. When, uh, and when you, when you, when you hear a pastor say, I'm not voting for a pastor, I'm voting for a president, is what you need to remember. You may not like his tweets. You may not like his past. You may not like how he speaks in a debate or that he may be talked over, which, you know, Biden talked over him, you know, a, a, a large number of times first before uh, Trump had to. But again, I've talked about that before, that you, you, you be a person where for four years people accuse you of all kinds of stuff that you didn't do for four years. And you have an entire media that does nothing but try to bring you down every day between you and your uh, press secretaries, whatever one's working, the latest one being uh, Kaylee McEnany, that all they do is try to tear her down constantly, that you, when you get your opportunity, that you are not also going to have to speak of yourself and speak about what it is that uh, you've accomplished because nobody else is going to. And, and I, don't, I don't know why you don't get that as a, a person who may be on the fence or somebody who's got, I don't like that he's, he's so boisterous because nobody's doing it. Nobody's speaking the truth. Everybody's so busy lying that you have to be boisterous. If you're not boisterous, nobody will ever know the great things that you've accomplished. All right, so I'm going to move forward to another spot here. 
about God in the United States of America. And this is just giving you a, an example of some of the great work being done at this church, but also some things that you need to understand about God uh, working in our, and I'm, I may be starting it a little bit ahead of time. It's really hard to find the exact spot. So please forgive me that I'm not going to always find the exact spot here. Let me look at a couple comments that are coming. You remind me of Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Somebody just said there. I remember. Okay. <laughs> Do I? I? I. I. I'm trying to think of what I've done. Do I look like? Do I look like? Do I look like Nancy? And we have the same haircut. I'm not quite sure. That's from Twitch, by the way. I usually get my most colorful uh, uh, comments from Twitch, which is fantastic. So I'm not sure why, because I'm not praying for the the president's death. I actually pray for the the president to live. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Please, somebody explain. But I'm much better looking. <laughs> oh, wait, there, there we go. You're much better looking. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. I'm not sure that I don't know Glenn. I don't. Glenn, I don't know. Pretty, pretty like Nancy. Oh, okay. Well, that makes more sense because if you're, that's actually a put down to Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a put down to me. Twitchers are hilarious. I love Twitchers. All right. So let's go to this next one. I think I found it. And so I'm going to bring in this next one. It has to do with God and the United States of America. What you need to understand about the um, uh, about United States of America and how important God is to our history and as we uh, move forward uh, in our existence. But we know a little bit about our nation's history, and we have a nation here on earth that God has created, and you're going to hear about that. A lot of you are not hearing about that. A lot of you have never heard about that. And so today, I promise you, you may hate me by the end of this message, and that's okay. Get in line. That's okay. But the truth is, you're going to hear from the halls of history and some from their own words. And I pray that you'll be all the better a Christian, a citizen, and a defender of righteousness and this republic. God speaks to us through his word in this entire month that we have some special guest speakers coming to make the point. The whole theme of this month will be it's time to pray, to vote, to stand. You'll see in the Bible today that that's what God would have of us. A lot of Christians We'll say, no, we don't get involved in that. Well, thank you. That's how we've gotten where we're at today. Good people, like Sir Edmund Burke warned us, good people, all that evil needs to do to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Deuteronomy. Yeah, isn't that so true? Is And this is one of the things I've been saying on my show is that we've been quiet for far too long. The conservatives and uh, I'm going to say conservatives and Republicans and independents. And I know that there's some crossover there. I know that if I say Republicans, I'm probably saying conservatives. But, um, you know, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that uh, whatever you call yourself, it doesn't matter. Uh, and even some Democrats that may be conservative Democrats is that, you know, you may be saying, you know, I, I lean towards what the president is doing in Israel. I lean towards what the president is doing and as far as taxes and that kind of stuff, that you're on the fence, that by being quiet and by doing nothing is how we got here. The, the looting on our streets, the, the destruction of um, our democratic cities run by democratic mayors where people live that are conservative and they're hiding and saying nothing is the reason why this is allowed to happen, is why they're defunding your law enforcement, is why they are allowing these criminals to, to run uh, your the cities, of people coming from other cities, coming into your cities and creating places like Chaz and Chop. It's because you stand back and say nothing. That good people doing nothing is the problem. And that is why I've been speaking so loudly and trying to tell people that I know you said you're going to lose your job. If you speak out and put an American flag in front of your house or you put a post with American flag or a, a, a flag with a blue line in the middle of it, or you even say anything positive towards Trump, you may lose your job. I'm telling you that that's going to be the, the least of your problems, losing your job. 
That's going to be the least of your problems in the next couple of years. That you not speaking up is 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 detrimental to the United States of America. You, you're okay with a young man who's 18 years old going to a foreign country and giving his life for you, but you're not willing to speak out because you might lose your job. You're willing for a, a woman who has a child that's six years of age to go out in Los Angeles in a patrol, gar, patrol car and protect you while you're sleeping, and she's shot in the face, and her partner's shot in the face. That's okay that they do that for you, but you're not willing to speak up because you're afraid to lose your job, or you're afraid to lose a family member, or they may, not, they may call you a racist. But let other people do that work for you. Let the 18-year-old go to, uh, to Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria. Let them do that. But you're not willing to speak up. You know, I have people that right now that are saying, you know, I'm not going to send my kids to school because, um, you know, because of whatever reason. I don't even know. Or uh, I'm not going to speak up against my school district. Or I'm not going to because, you know, I just don't want to be bothered by all that kind of stuff. See, that's the problem. Do you not understand that that is the problem? With why we're here, that is exactly what Jack Hibbs was just saying, is that good people being quiet is the reason we're in this situation right now, is why they're teaching Marxism in our universities and saying this is the way that our country needs to go, that our country is racist, that our law enforcement is racist, that our country is a horrible country. That's what they're being taught. Why? Because you are being quiet. Because you are afraid to say something because you may lose a family member who is going to call you a racist because you decided to vote for Donald Trump. And you have not taken the time to educate them. They may not be educatable, but you being quiet is surely not the solution because people being quiet is what is causing us to be um, destroyed, our country to be destroyed. And I, and I, and I don't believe. And I, again, I am so motivated by the people who have wished our president death who said RIP. I have friends right now that I've been very close to that have sent me messages saying, well, you know, I'm just going to unfriend you right now because you're being awful. I'm not being awful. I see people like you wishing our president to die. It's telling him rest in peace because of he has COVID-19. If you are going to unfriend me and you are going to block me, if you are going to mute me because you are upset that I'm upset that you wish our president to be dead, then I don't know what to tell you. That is not my problem. I, I've said this before. I don't like, uh, I, I didn't like President Obama. I didn't vote for him. I didn't like uh, President uh, uh, Bush Jr. The second, I didn't vote for him the second time. I voted him the first time, not the second time, because I felt that he lied to us. Either one of them I didn't like, right? Obama, I think, is one of the most corrupt presidents we've ever had now, especially now that I know more about him. But yet, if I was in the Secret Service, if I was a law enforcement officer who was assigned to protect him, I would have protected him. Why? Because he was the president of our United States. That is important. That is important for the world to see that our president is is important and being protected, regardless if I like him or not. Regardless if he's an asshole or not. Regardless if he's making good decisions for me or not, or my children or not. He's our president of the United States. If he's being attacked, he's attacking the United States of America. If they're attacking Obama when he was president, then he's attacking our children. He's attacking our, our land. And my job as a Secret Service, as a police officer, as I was for 21 years, I would lay down my life to protect the United States of America, even for a president that I didn't like. Why? Because that is, it's that important. And yet I have people, I have friends, I have people that I know that wish Donald Trump dead. And told him to rest in peace because he got COVID nineteen. I am more motivated now than ever to make sure that I, if I can, if I have even just a micron influence on somebody changing parties and voting red, then my job is done. I don't have a huge audience like Dan Bongiorno or anybody else. But if I can get one person to switch over and to vote because it's the right thing to do, whether they believe in God or not, I don't care. My job is to protect the United States of America. My job is to protect the Constitution. My job is to protect the president, whether he's a Democrat or Republican or an independent or a, a, a whatever, a Green Party. I don't care. If he's a president and he's been elected, my job is to protect the United States of America. Our Constitution lives. It will live and survive regardless of who the president is because we will ensure that it does. Our Constitution is amazing. Every con- country wishes that they had a constitution like ours. We have people trying to break into our country. We have nobody trying to break out. 
So don't tell me that we're racist. Don't tell me that we are horrible people. We are not. Our country is the, is, is the country that everybody wishes that they had. If our country falls, a lot of other, other countries are going to fall. If there's a disaster, our country looks to us to save them from their disaster. So don't tell me that our country is a horrible country. Those of you in the United States who grew up here, who think it's a horrible country, have never lived anywhere else. You've never been taught properly. You've been taught by people that are Marxist communists who hate our country. <sighs> Sorry. I, <didn't... laughs> I went a little crazy there. I'm in a good way. I, I'm, I'm going to find this next thing. Here, here, taxes in the United States. This one has to do with taxes in the United States. Hold on. I'm going to find it. I'm going to get my act together here because I'm so I'm so pissed at people wanting our president to die. It is just, it is disgusting. It is disgusting that you would even vote for that party after that. That you would even say that you're a Democrat. That you have a number of people that claim to be Democrats that work for Obama. People that work for Obama wishes that our, our president would die. That you would even vote Democrat is disgusting to me. And you want to unfriend me? Then unfriend me. I don't care. I don't care how long we know each other. I don't care. I, I don't care. And, uh, and and I'm feeling as I'm trying to find the spot here. Um, he's going to be talking, our great uh, pastor, Jack Hibbs, is going to be talking about California. Um, and uh, again, they threatened to arrest our pastor. They've, uh, they've threatened to close all the churches. They've arrested other pastors. Um, again, at, at each service, we have over 3,000 people show up to our services. We have children all in the classrooms um, and, you know, 30, 40 children in the classrooms. And we're fine. Uh, no, but don't worry about us. We're, we're perfectly fine. All right, let me catch, I'm going to catch my breath and have uh, I, I'm going to have a drink <laughs> while we go. All right, this is great. This is about taxes in California. You ready for this? This is going to be good. Is almost a ghost town because much of it is not being policed. Right? You live with. Voting is biblical, at least in two ways. Number one, voting reflects, I should say the result of the election reflects the morality of the citizenry. Did you know that? It is true, by the way. Are you guys okay? Yes. You're all quiet. Yeah, all right, we'll see. Um, <laughs> for example, for example, you listen, you listen, and you read the writings of and listening to the speeches of, for example, Nancy Pelosi, and you wonder, how did that happen? Take a drive north of here and visit her community. That little community, very small, you know, sent her there. What that community decides, you live with. And you can pick that for anywhere. Breaking news this week. The catastrophic revelation, not surprisingly, that on top of the annual bankruptcy rate of businesses in the city of New York, it is 40% higher. New York businesses are closing down. And they're saying one out of six will never be able to open up again. And one out of four restaurants will not open again in New York City. New York City is almost a ghost town. Because much of it is not being policed. Because the mayor is against that right now. The reflection of an election is seen on your streets and in your pocketbook. When are we going to learn that? It's amazing. It reflects the moral character, the one we send to wherever we go through them. Number two, it is how the issues are either rejected or accepted for your life and for your children's lives. Now, many people are saying, and I believe it's true now, I had my doubts before, how is it that in the, in the state of California, every time we've got a proposition that raises our taxes, Races our gas 
uh, raises our property tax, raises food, well, I'm not food, but raises, you name it. But if it raises taxes, Californians vote for it. We are the most taxed people in America and we voted for it. And yet I cannot find, I ask people, did you vote for that? For example, did you vote? You know the plastic bag deal? Did you vote for that? Did you vote for that? I can't find one person who said, I voted for plastic bags. I can't find one person. You see how much our gas taxes, 16 taxes on our gasoline for one gallon. I can't find one person who said, you know what? Lay on more taxes. I want more. I want to give more money to the government here in California. I can't find one person that said, I'm good with that. Tax me until I ain't got nothing left. Every time we vote, we vote for it. Makes you wonder what's going on. How is that possible? How is that possible? How is that possible? <laughs> I, 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 I've often thought the same thing because I ask people, did you vote for that? And everybody says, no, we don't. Uh, down here in Southern California, obviously we're in a different world than Northern California. That's why we think that California should actually be split and uh, and cut in half because none of it makes any sense. Who voted for the ability of, of, of men to have sex with children 10 years younger, as young as 14 years of age in our state? And they don't have to register as sex offenders. Who voted for that? Who thought that was a good idea? Not me. I got I got kids at seven and uh, uh, nine and 12 and 14 sitting right in front of me. Like, I, I didn't vote for any of that. How is that possible? That I live in a state that says that that's okay, that they don't have to register as sex offenders. I, 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 what world am I living in? This is really crazy that we're living in this state. And that's why, people, why don't you move? Well, I don't know why I don't move, but I know why I stay because I love the state. And if I, if I leave, then then what? Then there's nobody going to fight for the state. It's like, then why don't I leave the United States of America? We all have to fight for the United States of America. We have to speak up. Again, all I got to do is tell you is that you cannot stay quiet. It's the staying quiet part that has got us into this trouble. We're allowing our cities to be burnt down. We're allowing the people to make laws that are destroying our children. We're allowing this to happen. Because we're afraid, because when we say God or Jesus, people get all offended. When we say Donald Trump, people get offended. When we say that we're voting for less taxes, people get offended. When we vote for, you know, more laws that will put people in jail, people get offended. When we, when we say, hey, we can't take criminals coming across our border, then people get offended. When we say that we can, we want people to be here legally, not illegally, people get offended. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. It's all biblical. All of those things are biblical. Following the laws and creating laws that protect us from the criminal element are biblical. I was a police officer and I arrested people without bias based on who they were. Mexican, Blacks, Asian, White, uh, uh, Indian. It didn't matter to me. Did you commit a crime? If you committed a crime, I handcuffed you and I took you to jail and processed you. I didn't care who you were. 99.99, almost like COVID-19, right? We're like the COVID-19, right? The 99.9997% of people are fine. It's the little percentage of people that need to go to jail, that, 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 that get it and get sick because they have other underlying conditions. There's a small percentage of people. And here we're letting a small percentage of people control our entire life and destroy our country. We're allowing a small percentage of people to burn down buildings, to, to kick windows as we're driving down the road of our cars, to kick us out of our, our seats at a, at a restaurant and yell at us and call us a racist because we don't say Breonna Taylor's name, the criminal who was shot because she dated um, narcotics uh, the traffickers and her herself drove around and delivered narcotics and one time was found with a dead body in her trunk because of that person, because we don't say her name, we can't sit at a restaurant and enjoy our meal. It is because of that, because of being quiet and allowing it to happen is why we're in the position we are today. 
and you need to wake up. All right. The next one has to do with police. I'm going to find it here right now. Uh, and this path, this message today, if you have not, I mean, you got to watch the whole message. You're crazy if you don't. <laughs> you are crazy. I will actually put the link in the chat uh, as we are um, as we are talking here. And um, hold on. You know what I love about this message is it's a message to church called um, it's time to pray, vote and stand. Pray, vote and stand. If you haven't seen that in the background, pray, vote and stand. And so many pastors are afraid to talk about voting. And, um, you know, uh, voting for the right people because they think that there's an issue with uh, separation of church and state. It's not in the Constitution. Find in the Constitution uh, and then get back to me. It's not. Uh, it was in a letter uh, to one person. Anyway. So uh, just understand that. All right. So this part has to do with policing. Uh, and I think it's important. I'm going to end on something with George Washington. So stick around one more time. And I know that I, the, the, the numbers are strong. They've stayed strong the entire time. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, um, Oh, what's to say? There you go. Uh, again, stating facts that go against the narrative. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. All right. So let me bring this up to the stream. God and teaches us the way to be happy in this world and in the next. Continue, therefore, to read it and to regulate your life by its precepts. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? <laughs> You see, what does that do with the Bible? Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any nation. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Proverbs 29, verse 2. Where the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked man rules, the people groan. Think of it. If we woke up as a nation and demanded that our leaders have a high standard... And acted accordingly. And if we required those leaders to implement righteousness in our streets, we would not be afraid to go to downtown L.A. today or Chicago. That's godlessness and lawlessness. Yes, your vote matters. I'm going to try to control myself right now. There's a president running for re-election and there's a vice president running for election. For the presidency of the United States. One is almost wholly committed uh, or has the commitment of the police unions across the nation. The other one does not. One says police need to be defunded and the money needs to be diverted to other ways of policing. And the other one says we need to strengthen our police across this nation. I'm not naming names, but which one of those ideas would you vote for? Now, if you live, if you live behind a gated community with an armed guard out at the roadway, you don't really care. But if you're like the rest of us, you want your police Officers to be the best equipped, the best knowledgeable, the best trained, because they are the keepers of your freedom. That's why you should vote. You should vote because judges are going to be selected, pro-life judges. You'll hear more about that later this, later this month. Number three, we're going to end on this point. Sorry, it takes me a second to click over to the other thing. And so there's another thing that he says. And what I, I, I watch all three messages of Jack because he throws in little tidbits of information in each one of them that's a little bit different than the other. But um, people ask him all the time, when you go to Israel, aren't you afraid to go to Israel? He goes, yes, I am afraid to go to Israel because I have to drive from my home to LAX. And that drive through Los Angeles is so dangerous. <laughs> and that, that's more dangerous than actually being in Israel. And that, that really says a lot, right? He goes, the, the concerning part is not being in Israel. It's driving from Chino Hills to LAX, which is the most dangerous part of the trip to Israel. Um, and it is so, that's so true. It is, it is um, that to, to think that we have a, 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 an amount of people here in our country that think that we need to get rid of the police is just astonishing. Whether or not, and, and I know I'm biased because I'm a former police officer. Um, but, um, 
it just makes no sense. I mean, it, it, it's, it's so unbelievable to fathom that you have anybody in the Democratic Party. I have some people that are Jews, that are um, agnostic, that are um, uh, uh, atheists, that are Mormons, and I have uh, friends and family that are on all these. But in the end, whether you believe in God or not, or you believe that Donald Trump believes in God or not, who really cares that all of these issues, whether it has to do with abortion, all right, maybe not everybody agrees that the country, uh, the, 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 the government needs to be involved in whether you get an abortion or not, whether, whether that's the issue or not, all right? But late-term abortion, right, I, I'm not sure, I, I have an issue with abortion, but I'm not sure that I agree that children should be aborted after they uh, are born or close to being born. That is probably, <laughs> that's a game changer, right? Like, what common sense person say, wait, the child, it's a child. Like, no, no, you can't kill a child. No. I don't even know why that's even an argument. But no matter what religion you are, it doesn't make any sense. Right, and then we then we we come into the area of uh, law and order. Like, are you just against law and order because you hate the president of the United States and you hate his tweets? Like, where does that make any sense? Okay, so maybe you don't like his tweets. Maybe you don't like that he's obese. Maybe you don't like his hair. Maybe you don't like that he's orange. But don't you like that you can? And again, I brought this up all the time. That I love that I can send my children to. My, my son's telling me to wrap it up. That I can send, he can ride his bike. He's six years old, seven, he's seven, sorry. He's seven years old. He can ride his bike to 7 Eleven and get a drink if he wants to. 7 Eleven's right around the corner from my house. Like, why would I not want that? Why wouldn't you want that if you live in Chicago or you live in Los Angeles or you live in Baltimore? Why wouldn't you want it be to be safe for your seven year old to get on a skateboard or his bicycle and ride to 7 Eleven? away from his home by himself and get a, a bag of Takis or a Sprite. How are you against that? When you vote Democrat, you obviously are against that, that you don't care whether your child can go to 7-Eleven or not. Because they are obviously against defunding the police. How is that not obvious to you? Is it, is it, is it your hatred for some person? Regardless of his policies, the policies are different from the person. Your hatred for the person is so strong that you're for not having the ability for your seven-year-old to go to the 7-Eleven and buy a, ta- a bag of tacos. Really? All right. One last thing. Let's talk about George Washington really quick. I just want to show you this one last thing. I thought it was powerful to hear what happened with George Washington here on this thing. So I'm going to play that for you right now. It's the last thing. And then the day your lights. That's, That's where he, where moves. he moves. He visits, he visits places, places like, Sac- like Sacramento, Washington, Moscow, London, the part. He goes to Satan moves to the power brokers of the world, put stuff in their head, speaks to them. We're not fighting against Putin. We're not fighting against Erdogan. We're fighting against the demonic powers that are operating behind them to bind and to capture men's souls. That's who we are. We read the Bible. Do we really believe this thing? Honestly. Yeah. Then listen, we have to stand. But what you doing? Well, I'm standing. I'm standing in the spirit. I'm standing. Well, good. But what is? How does that manifest in real life on the battle, on the battlefield of life itself? Standing, standing for what's righteous. For, for listen. For we do not wrestle against flesh, flesh and blood, but against principalities. We wrestle against powers and against the rulers of the age, and the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly realms. Isn't that weird? We fight against things that are invisible. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Hello, that's now. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Almost done. The battle of Mangahila, George Washington, Colonel George Washington, under the command of General Braddock, you, you don't have to think about this, but George Washington is wearing a red coat. He's, he's a soldier for the British forces in America as a colonel. One of the horrific slaughters in 1755, then Colonel George Washington of the British forces in America, having survived the Battle of Mangahila, wrote, this is right out of his diary, ladies and gentlemen, in the National Archives, 
But by the all-powerful dispensations of providence, I have been protected beyond all human probability or expectation. For I had four bullets through my coat and two horses shot out from underneath me, yet escaped unhurt. Although death was leveling my companions on every side of me. Listen, Washington was the only officer to survive that battle. Courage has got to be gathered, people. You're not born with courage. You need to know that. It's got to be gathered. When I say gathered, it's got to be brought up into you. You got to have a cause. Something bigger than you. Until we get to heaven, what are we fighting for? Until we get to heaven, what's worthy? of our commitment, what's worthy of our blood. Is it not God and the things that he has entrusted to us? We are to be stewards and managers over what God has given. But if we lose this, listen, if we lose it, we'll inherit a culture like inheriting the wind that's happening right now. Right now, you're seeing a tactic and your young kids are learning this in school right now, if not on the internet. I'm going to give it to you. You're going to hear it. and You're going to say, oh yeah, I've heard that used. I've heard that saying. Let me tell you who gave it to you. Give it to your kid. Regarding culture and canceling culture, this man said, accuse others of what you do. Did you all hear me? Accuse others of what you do. In psychology, we would say it's deflection or projection. When some... If you see somebody doing something wrong and you say, hey, that's wrong, they turn right around and say, oh, you you know what? You are so wrong. And they flip it. And our modern media is masters of it, by the way. So is your college kid. Why? Because Karl Marx is being taught in our universities today. Karl Marx went on to say the first battlefield is rewriting history. It's not 1776. 1619. Oh, you can stop that buffoonery in a heartbeat. I'll tell you how. They say that the pilgrims came over here to exploit the natives and to steal land and do all that stuff. Listen, hallelujah. Listen, hallelujah that the Massachusetts Bay Company, for example, they didn't create this nation. The narrative that your kids are learning Thank God, hallelujah, that the Virginia Company didn't create this nation. Those were companies sent over here by the crown to create a nation here, and they all failed. Except for a group of people who hired a bunch of unbelievers to put them in a very tiny ship to sail on over here to land at Plymouth called the Pilgrims. You see, the 1619 group of revisionists want to get you distracted off the truth over here to rewrite history, and they're going to get you mired down in the weeds that all these guys were sought buying and selling and capturing Indians and doing this stuff. And they just went away in history. They turned into dust. But this little group of people who came on over on those boats like those other guys did, God put his hand on those Pilgrims and a nation was born. You can read the Mayflower Compact if you want to know more about that. Oh, sorry, I had to gather myself just a little bit. <laughs> the, the story of George Washington, and then he goes into the the, 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 the sixteen nineteen project. Just um, oh, when he talks about the courage. The courage <clears throat> that we need to have for this country to save this country <clears throat> is not is not genetic. And I know it's tough. <laughs> yeah, my son my son's trying to make me smile. <laughs> it is not it's not easy. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy for you to speak up when you have a decision 
to keep peace in your family, to keep peace in your business, to keep your job, to stay in a school, to stay in a community, to um, listen. I understand. I was just in the Yorbalinda, and I call them the Yorbalinda riots. I'm not sure what you want to call them. Whatever you want to call them. The Yorbalinda uprising, where uh, BLM and Antifa came into our city, and we stood up against them and pushed them out of our city. Whatever that was, you can make it big or small. It doesn't matter. That there is a group of men and women who decided to stand up for our community. It's not easy because people said, oh, my gosh, you are going to die. You are going to get hurt. You are stay safe, right? People were concerned for our safety. And and I never thought anything of it. I felt that I don't, I I never thought that I shouldn't be there. I never thought that I shouldn't be in the middle of it. I never thought that I should not be bringing it to you to show what it is we're doing. So I don't know where it is that it it comes from me. The only thing that I know that that I I gain strength from is the fact that I have children. I still think I would be there regardless if I had children or not, because it's the right thing to do for our country. But the strength that I get is for my children, because I do not want them to grow up in a Marxist socialist country. I do not want them to grow up not understanding how fantastic the Constitution of the United States is. I don't want them to grow up without knowing how great the United States history is. I don't want them to not hear stories about George Washington who was one of the sole survivors of one of the most horrific battles at a, as a British um, uh, soldier that somehow that he was saved, that he actually had four bullets going through the cloak that he was wearing, that the horse that he was on was shot from underneath him, that he survived and became the first president of the United States. That somehow that this man was miraculously saved was not killed in the battle and became our first president of the United States of America, the greatest country in our world's history, that there wasn't some divine intervention, that there wasn't something, there wasn't a reason for him to be saved while all everybody around him, everyone around him, including his commander was killed in that battle. Don't look at me. This is important. I'm sorry. My children are all standing in front of me and looking at me right now. I will not be quiet. And I would hope that those of you that also feel the same way, but are quiet because you're afraid of uh, what may become of you or your job or uh, relationships. Uh, because it's uh, it is bigger than that. We are at a, a time in our country that uh, need people to stand up and be strong and brave and not get teary eyed <laughs> and not um, lose their crapola. But um, This this is an important time. I don't know what's going to happen. I feel strongly that um, based on what I'm seeing out there with the number of people and the the people that are outside uh, uh, Walter Reed, the people that were in Yorba Linda, the people that are in, you know, the coast of Florida with the the boats, with with the flags, the flags that I see driving down the freeway, the people with bumper stickers at the church that all say Trump 2020. Um, our great pastor giving great messages, whatever that is, 
that's going on, I, I feel strongly that we have an opportunity to turn this entire country into a bunch of patriot, whatever that's red or whatever, you, whatever, whatever you want to call it. We have um, a, uh, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that we have a lot of people that uh, support our country, whether you love our president or not, I don't care. But uh, he needs to live. So our country depends on him. All right, my friends. Obviously, I can't. Uh, I can't get past whatever is going on with me right now. Come here. Hey, let me show. Can you show everybody about your disguise, your ninja disguise? Come on. Come here. Come here. Show them your disguise. Come here. Mm-mm. My son has this great shirt. Um, it's a, this is going to be a positive note to end on. Show them your shirt. Mm-hmm. He has a shirt that says, ask me about my ninja disguise. Show them your ninja disguise. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> show them your ninja disguise. Please. Mm-hmm. Please. Mm-hmm. Show, them your ninja, show, mm-hmm. show them your ninja disguise. Show them. Put it, put it on your face. Why? Because. No. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> show them. Come on, you got a six pack. You always get on the show without a shirt on. What's it? Show your ni- on the inside is a ninja mask. <laughs> you may have seen it. All right, my friends, I gotta go. Um, I gotta go cook dinner. He's obviously starving. Uh, and I love you guys for watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I love you guys. God bless you. Um, we gotta, we gotta speak up. We can't allow. Uh, what's happening in our country to uh, to continue to happen? Oh, I was going to put the uh, the message that I played parts of. It's all in there. Click on that. Watch the message. It's fantastic. <laughs> they want to see your ninja shirt. Come on, show your ninja shirt. Hold on. Hold on. I was, you know what he's going to do? I'm going to keep you on for one more second. Hey, one second. Just one second. He's going to go. He's he wants. To, he doesn't want to show. He, he comes on the on the show all the time without wearing a shirt, and now today he doesn't want to show up because it's going to show his uh, his six pack belly. And really, do I look like Nancy Pelosi? I'm really I don't I can't get past that. Somebody <laughs> said I look like Nancy Pelosi. That is so crazy. Oh, so crazy. Hey Priscilla, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, be strong, courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord, your God, will be with you for you wherever you go, Joshua 1, 9. Thank you, Carl. That is awesome. I appreciate that so much. All right, son, come here. Show your shirt. Show your nose. Oh, oh. Show your nose. Shirt. Here, I'll hold it. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That's all I had for you. <laughs> Don't punch me. And the ninja, the ninja's punching me. All right, my friends. I love you guys so much and I appreciate you. God bless you. Um, and um <laughs> as he's being my doctor. All right. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. He's gonna he's gonna be a massage therapist or a chiropractor. All right, my friends. Hey, let's do this first. I'm gonna show you something first. Here we go. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'll talk to you again. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>